Good afternoon. So thank you so much for attending the Lamrim class, even the Twitter of weekend. <laughs> I think some of your friends enjoying in the park by having coffee. <laughs> okay, so today we start <coughs> new <coughs> new lessons. I make sure you won't have confusion. I will do short revision about the practice. Simply, you just think this is the fact. <clears throat> there are three types of suffering. One is the gross suffering, which is we experience our day-to-day -day life, this life and next life. There's a very gross type of suffering. The second, there are some more subtle types of suffering. Then there's another very subtle types of sufferings. So in order to eliminate the first type of suffering, you need to practice only, you can, you, you can, you, you only can practice uh, the ten virtuous action through practice of ten virtuous actions, then you are able to reduce the suffering in this life. Then you are able to free from the unfortunate realms or unfortunate life. But only practice the ten virtues action, you cannot be free from samsara. So in order to free from <coughs> samsara, then you need to realize selflessness. You need to generate practice renunciation. Then when you practice the unionly, compoundly, two of them, then definitely you are able to free from samsara, you can achieve liberation. But still you are not free from the subtle truth of suffering. So, therefore, achieving liberation is not just enough for you to be completely happy. Therefore, thought, so you need to practice Buddha Chitta, top of renunciation, selflessness, or emptiness, then you must practice Buddha Chitta. When you practice the unanly emptiness and Buddha Chitta, then you will achieve Buddhahood, you will achieve the truth Buddha bodies, Dharmakaya and Rupakaya then you are fully, completely free from any types of suffering, any types of cause of suffering. Then you are completely peace and completely happiness. Then, so the second type of suffering, <coughs> which is, you know, suffering in the samsara, the samsaric suffering, there's a two practices. One we call, you know, non-transcendent meditative serenity and special insight. So when you 
when you try to free from samsara then first you need to reduce the gross types of the truth the origin of sufferings which are ignorance attachment desire anger so and so so when you try to reduce just simply try to reduce try to minimize then you no need to realize selflessness and emptiness you can practice the non transcendent serenity and special insight so how you can you know reduce all of them through applying the trans not non transcendent serenity special insight then you must remember that in the foundation basics you need to go through the nine mental states through practice of the nine mental states then you will achieve serenity in order to achieve the serenity or kama bodhing or uh, samatha then you must recognize the three main obstacle number 1 excitement number 2 uh, number 2 uh, what is uh, laxity number 3 the like the the foggy mind he within the knowing this three obstacle then when you do meditation meditation on impermanence meditation on the gross and calmness make sure that time your mind is fully focused on the object of meditation as well as make sure you able to see the object of meditation very clearly that mean you are free from the true obstacle because you fully you are, you are, you able to focus on the object of meditation mean that that time you don't have the excitement your mind is stay on the object if you able to see the object very clearly the clarity is there that mean your meditation the meditative concentration is free from laxity through you know uh, free from this obstacle then you will achieve serenity kama bodhing samatha then next step next practice after you achieve uh, the serenity kama bodhing samatha they are synonymous samatha then you need to practice seven what seven do you remember seven seven intention seven intention this mean you still you just achieve serenity you have a very stability concentration but you have a reduce any you know desire attachment when we talk about desire attachment there are three types of attachment one attachment of desire realms attachment of form realms attachment of formless realms so as a as a desire being so we are human being so we are include into desire being desire realm being so we have three all the three types of attachment when we think about our you know world we have a strong attachment desire also when we think about you know the form form realms also we we have a attachment our mind is attached to them also when we think about the formless realms also we have a you know 
attachment towards formless realms. That means we have uh, three types of attachment. Attachment towards desire realms, attachment towards formless realms, and formless. When you reduce the desire realms attachment, still you have attachment. Even though you're able to reduce you know, the desire and form realms attachment, still you have another type of attachment, which is, which is formless desire, formless realm attachment. So you have to reduce three of them step by step. When you practice the non-transcendent shamatha and special insight. So you must know what are the, the seven seven what seven? Attention. attention. Yeah, attention. Within the seven, the first intention is just differentiate between desire realms and form, form realms. So when you think about the desire realms, it's very gross. So many suffering, so many problems. The life is so short. We have a lot of, you know, always sufferings. When you think about the form beings, form realms, compared with desire, the form realm is much happier. It has a long, much longer life. Their life is much, much better than this life, our life. First, you need to differentiate two of them, then fully contemplate between the desire and the form realms. And then second, just, just differentiate. You, you really need to generate a strong conviction. Then practice two of them, then you're able to reduce the desire, afflictive emotion, the gross level. Then subtle, very subtle, you know. Attachment also you can and you can categorize into three types, very strong and a bit uh, weaker, then very, you know, subtle. So that's why how you can free from uh, the gross emotions. But if you only practice the non-transcendent, worldly, meditative concentration, serenity, spirit insight, you cannot be free from samsara. You cannot be free. You cannot cut the root of the samsara, which is ignorance. Then, after you achieve serenity, the, you, if you wish to achieve liberation, then you need to change the object of meditation. Until now, you just meditate on you know, the gross and calmness of between desire realms and form realms. Even though you meditate on impermanence, you, you have the you know, serenity which is focused on impermanence, even though it, this practice you cannot reduce, cannot eliminate the ignorance. Therefore, you need to change the object of meditation which is emptiness. Emptiness, selflessness. This means the concentration, the meditative concentration is same. But the object is change. Just the, the object of meditation is need to change. Need to be changed. So then how I, I, how I can meditate on emptiness? Right? This means first you need, must know the non-transcendent, meditative, serenity, spiritual insight is free from laxity, free from excitement. It has a very clarity. It can stay there for a few hours, few days continuously, but it cannot eliminate the root of the samsara. Next, you need to know what is the root of the samsara, what is the root of the sufferings and problems. That means ignorance. Ignorance, right? Ignorance. Three, three the mental poison. So now, one big question. What, what does it mean ignorance? Ignorance means 
<coughs> when we think about particular, you know, certain object, for example, you know, everybody has a, you know, books. When you think about, when you look at the book, which you have right now, which is you had yesterday. For us, the book which is we had, we have right now, which is had yesterday, we can see the books are, is the same, right? So we have a, a misperception about the book. We have a mi misperception of the, you know, impermanent and subtle impermanent. In the reality, the book is changing momentarily, which is we had yesterday, which is we have now, the two books are totally different. For us, we can perceive the same book. That way we have a misperception about impermanent. Therefore, before you think about emptiness, first you think about the impermanence, the subtle impermanence. The subtle impermanent meaning means all the condition phenomena changing momentarily. All condition phenomena, the book, the table, your body, your speech, your house, your car, every object has a only one moment to stay, to remain. One moment, second moment, the first moment has gone. That means everything is changing momentarily, very subtle moment, changing momentarily. Then you need to know the impermanence. In order to know the subtle impermanence, then you, do, you must know why things are changing momentarily. Why? How? It's how is changing? It's changing momentarily. Why? The, you know, the condition phenomena changing moment, why? Then, all the condition phenomena depending on causes and condition. Right? Causes and condition. For example, when you are so hungry, then what you need to do? You need to eat. When you take one spoon of food, you, f you, you feel, you know, you feel a bit happy. One spoon, two spoon, then one plate. That means each of the spoon fulfill you, fulfill your stomach. It's stressed by your sense of hungry, right? That means same thing. Every condition phenomena changing momentarily. It's momentarily changing because it changed by its own causes and condition. That means in order to meditate. Subtle impermanence, you need to realize. Subtle impermanence, how is changing? Changing momentarily. Why they are changing? Changing by their own causes and condition. Then when you realize that yeah, all condition phenomena depend on, depending on their cause and condition, then you realize dependent origination. Depend on cause and condition. Then still, if you think more deeper level, more precisely, no, it is not just depend on causes and condition. Also, it depend on, you know, their parts and whole, parts and whole. For example, you know, this glass case, of course, is produced by causes and condition. It it itself has many parts. It has a billions of billions of atom. You know, so many things come together. It become the glass case. That means this glass case depends on cause and condition as well as it depends on their its own parts. Then second, dependent on parts and whole. Then, yes, this glass case depending on cause and condition also dependent on their its own parts. Without parts, they cannot be there. Then third, no, 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 it is not just, de not just depending on causes and condition. It is not just only depending on parts. Also, it depending, depending on thoughts and, you know, the terms or language. This means, yes, it is produced from causes and condition. It has uh, many parts. Finally, how this thing, this piece of thing become glass case? 
That means there's a things, then somebody give a name. Name. The name come from where? Come from your thoughts. For example, Singapore. Let's say 500 years ago, there wasn't Singapore. There was a just, you know, like an island. Then slowly, you know, maybe some people come from Malaysia or come from China, come from India. Then maybe first time there's only maybe two or three people, maybe 10 or 20 people. Then they give name of Singa, Singpur, right? Singpur, Sing, Singpur. Actually, originally, Singpur, now you call Singapore. Singapur. Then look at how this island becomes Singapore. Because of the name. The name come from where? From thoughts. That means every condition phenomena dependent on causes and condition, depending on parts, depending on thoughts and name. When you think when you use, when you apply these three the meaning of three dependent origination, then you will realize, yeah, huh, not, nothing, there's nothing really we can say, this object is exists independently, exists from object side. Right? Then, slowly you will realize all phenomena, include your body, include yourself, is nature is emptiness. Now everybody think about yourself, how you exist. Is your body you? Is your head, your eyes, your nose, your tongue? Is you? No, it is not you. Because we say, my hand, my hands, my head, my leg, my body. That means you and your body is separate. That you, you are not your body, your body is not you. Then. Is you like mine? No. No, then also we say, my mind, my love, my compassion, my kindness, my tolerance. Also it's very clear, right? You are not your mind, your mind is not you. Then how you exist? That means, I mean exist mainly, merely, only dependent on my five aggregates. This work of the five aggregates is the basis of you. Based on the five aggregates, then somebody name you. That's why it is so important to realize emptiness. How I can realize? That means you need to use all the logic, not only the logics. You must rely on, you know, the right, the good, teacher who has the perfect understanding of emptiness, not only just understanding, who has a perfect experience about emptiness. If you meet this kind of person, doesn't matter who, you know, he or she, doesn't matter a sangha or lay person, who has a perfect knowledge about emptiness, who has a perfect experience to introduce you emptiness, then you must rely on this person and study, you know, his, his teaching, follow his teaching. That means you should not rely on just person, you must rely on teaching. Teaching, right? Teaching. First, you may need a person, then must rely on his teaching. Just, just should not just rely on the person, rely on the teaching. Then when we think about teaching, teaching taught by Buddha Shakyamuni, or teaching taught by other masters. All the teaching explain only two things. The ultimate truth, the conventional truth. The conventional truth, ultimate truth. There's only t two types of teaching. The teaching which is explained, emptiness, bodhicitta, six pranjana, paramita, you know, renounce all the teachings, teaching about the conventional truth. If you just rely on the teaching which is only explain all the practices, not emptiness, then you cannot realize emptiness. Second, within the teaching, you must rely on the teaching which is explain emptiness. Right? For example, you want to go to 
like Malaysia. You have been reading the guide book, guide book of Indonesia. <laughs> the, you have been, then you say, I'm, where are you going? I'm going to Malaysia. What are you reading? I'm reading the guide book of the Indonesia. Then you cannot find the Malaysia, right? You must need the right teaching, which is actually emptiness. Then, you know, there's a, for example, Hat Sutra is the one of the popular, you know, it's not really popular, it's very, the similar sound teaching. It's not popular, it's become popular because it's so small. So <laughs> one, one page, huh? Hat Sutra. Yes, of course, when you read the Hat Sutra, even if you read, you know, another, you know, the uh, 8,000 verses, Prajana Pramana teaching, the content, the subject matter is same. Then you must read the teaching about emptiness. What you call the definite meaning, right? Then when you read the Heart Sutra, at the beginning, you must know what is the main purpose of the Heart Sutra. His purpose for realize emptiness. Man proposed to cut the ignorance. Then what is the subject matter? It is emptiness. Right? Then you must learn the teaching, then practice, study and practice. Saturday means you open the book, you read the book, sentence by sentence, you listen the teaching, that means you are studying. You know, you are studying. Then not only just study, then you need what? You need a reflection. You need to reflect on the emptiness. Even the impermanence, first you listen very carefully, you know, teaching from someone, or you read very carefully about impermanence, many times. And then slowly, your mind has a more clear understanding about emptiness and impermanence. Then, when you have a good understanding, then you keep, you know, think again and again, again and again about emptiness or impermanence, again and again, your mind becomes more clear about emptiness. You know, there's mere reflection. You know, we could say, you know, hearing, thinking, and meditate or meditation. When you have a really good understanding without, without having any, you know, misperception, then you fully realize emptiness. The emptiness you realize through your, you know, the mind, the six mind, not the five senses, five consciousness, no, through six mind. When you realize emptiness, then you meditate on the emptiness. That means emptiness is an object, then your six mind fully focus on emptiness. Emptiness. For, right? For emptiness. That time also make sure you are fully focused on it. Make sure you, that time you won't have the laxity, excitement, the foggy mind. There's a very dangerous, if you meditate on something with the foggy mind, with the laxity, then your mind become very foggy. Slowly your mind become very lazy. You cannot think much. You cannot remember much because your mind just stay in the foggy state for many hours, many days, many months. Then finally, you you cannot remember anything. You spoil you you, you are you know you are spoil spo, spoil your mind with the foggy mind. That's why it's so important to know how to meditate emptiness. So next, so how I should you know study, which text. Now here, very important, you know, right now, most of, all of you are Singaporean, except me and you, <laughs> then all of you are Singaporean. Look at, most time we, what we do, we follow very simple kind of teaching, which is taught by, you know, our local masters. A Tibetan follow mainly Tibetan master. Singaporeans most follow the Chinese master. The Chinese people mainly follow the Chinese master. You know, Thai people mainly try to follow the Thai, but Thai is good because they mainly focus on the Sutra. 
rather than the you know the commentary on but we follow many different tradition number one you know you must yes rely on the our local master second we must go further or the, we follow the indian master because those are the you know teacher of our local master teacher that mean you must follow the local master as well as follow the indian master finally you must follow the buddha teaching right the buddha teaching is look like the snow mountain all the buddha teachings are the you know like river like the water stream all the water come from in tibet where from sino then you know, all the buddhist teaching come from buddha shakyamuni teaching then second within the indian master there so there were so many indian must indian buddhist master then we need to follow the madhyamaka you know master nagajuna so so nagajuna has a two most important disciples who are they arya deva uh actually uh, there's a uh, i think two different ideas nagarjuna main disciple is arya deva no doubt and buddha palita no doubt then later you know somebody believe uh chandagirdi he the met arya nagarjuna somebody said no chandagirdi come much later so he really didn't meet nagarjuna who ever we must follow nagarjuna and arya deva arya deva then after arya deva then there are two disciples buddha palita and chandakirti chandakirti so we follow the chandakirti text because the chandakirti text you know the enter into the middle way engage into middle way is a very uh, important text to explain both of them emptiness and ultimate truth and conventional mostly he emphasize about emptiness right so this is we study until now the simply we need to practice uh 10 virtues action every day then you have up the very foundation without practice it even though you talk to pet you you try to practice any kind of practice never be you know good practice therefore for you practice the 10 virtues action then slowly you try to practice renunciation taking refuge then slowly you try to realize selflessness emptiness then you try to reduce the gross affliction afflictive emotions through using that non transcendent serenity and special insight then slowly you try to apply the transcendent serenity and special insight based on meditation or emptiness then you need to realize emptiness there are two methods one you follow the right teaching second you must use the right logic so after you listen the teaching straight teaching do a lot of reflection do a lot of meditation try to realize emptiness direct directly direct perception with the without buddhichitta then you will go you will achieve liberation with the buddhichitta you will achieve buddhahood so we study about until here right nagarjuna then so we need to follow the definite meaning teaching
So then there's a few uh, different views based on the Indian master, um, based on the early Tibetan master, as well as the Chinese master. We just leave there. Now we follow the third one. What is the third one? The stage of entry into reality. I think page number one nine. 119. Now it's very important you know, because the, the topic is, uh, the subject is quite heavy, but we study very slowly. So make sure you, you have the good, you know, right understanding. You, you just, you know, satisfy, just happy with the understanding. You must practice. Okay? Good understanding as well as good practice. Good practice continuously. Continuously, seriously. If you practice seriously, continuously, then within one year, you will have, you know, little result you can see. So, here's a page number 119. <coughs> 119, this is the plus one number, is it? Singapore? 999. Okay. 199, I think, US. 911, yeah. Okay. 199. Here's uh, three parts. Number one, there's uh, two parts. How to det determine the philosophical view of emptiness? There has uh, two parts. What we are studying, we are studying the stage of entry into reality. Right? It has uh, two parts. What are they? How to determine the philosophical view of emptiness, then the stage of entry into reality. Three has uh, two parts. The stage of entry into reality, the question, question, right? Look at, it's so important question. Nirvana is the reality one seeks to attain, but what is the Nirvana? If entry into reality means the methods of for attaining it, then how to do enter? The question number one, what is the question number one? What is the nirvana? Then question number two, how to enter into nirvana? That means it's, it's, it's two questions, okay? Okay, two questions. What is the nirvana? How I can achieve nirvana, right? That means what is the nirvana? What is the methods to achieve nirvana? Here, I think most of you listen many, I uh, heard many times. I will explain very shortly about, you know, nirvana or liberation. So when we say he or she achieve liberation, he or she achieve nirvana, it doesn't mean he or she, you know, went to somewhere. No. We can achieve liberation, nirvana, in Singapore, in your house. You don't have to go anywhere. Clear? Clear? Then, how I can achieve liberation? Then you thought, many people thought, oh, one day when my body is disappear, when, when my body disappear into the rainbow light, do you think you achieve liberation? No, no. Then think about how Buddha Shakyamuni achieved Nirvana. How he achieved Nirvana. Where did he practice? In India. Where? Bodh Gaya. Under the Bodhi tree. So he achieved, we believe, right? He achieved Nirvana under the Buddha tree at Bodh Gaya. He never go anywhere. How? That means, I mentioned before, in order to achieve liberation, Buddhahood, you need to realize emptiness. 
all phenomena nature's emptiness. Within the emptiness, for you so important to realize, to realize the emptiness of your own mind, your own mind, your own mind. Okay. So of course you must realize emptiness of your body, speech. But so important to realize emptiness of your own minds, your own minds. That means your mind is the conventional truth. Right? Your mind, your body, your speech, bodhicitta, renunciation, all of them, the conventional truth. The emptiness of your mind, the mind's emptiness is the ultimate truth. When we say you must realize emptiness, you must realize emptiness of your own mind. Your mind. That means all the afflict emotions, all the negative thoughts arise from where? From mind. From minds. So it dissolves into where? Dissolves into your minds. So mind is the you know the basis to arise all the F emotions, also basis of dissolving all the effect emotions. So when you realize emptiness of your minds, minds, then you practice you know the antidote of attachment, ignorance, so on. So slowly, all the defiled minds are going to disappear. Disappear where? Within the emptiness of your mind. That means when you are, the nature of your mind become very pure. No more afflict emotions. No, no more you know. Uh, the negative thoughts. That means you have become mind become pure, very pure. Once your mind become just pure, then you can say you achieve liberation, nirvana. When your mind, nature of your mind become very pure, then you can say you achieve Buddhahood, you become a Buddha. That means the Nirvana you can achieve anywhere when you achieve Buddha, Nirvana or Buddhahood, the nature of your mind become very pure, free of all the affect emotions. Nirvana means, you know, when, when your nature of your mind become very pure, then you achieve Nirvana. Question and answer. Right? Question. Reply. The reality that you seek to attend, the embodiment of truth, is the totally extinction of the conception of both self and that which is belong to the selves. Now, these are two words. He said, look at the reality that you seek to attain, the embodiment of the truth, is the total extinction of what? Conceptions. Both. There are two conceptions. What are they? Self and which belong to the self. Specifically, by stopping all the, the worries internal and external phenomena from the appearance as though they were reality itself, which they are not along with the latent predisposition for such as false appearance. Here, two are very important, both the self and which is belong to self. When we say belongs to, it's not the for me. I say for me. Huh? I, for me, I don't think it's the right translation. Here you must know, you, can, you must know based on your own experience. Okay? Just you imagine, I want to go. Just feel, just think, I want to go. I want to go. Right? That time you have a thoughts. Right? You have a thoughts. The thoughts is thinking what? Thinking, I want to, thinking about going. I want to go. Go is action. When I'm go, I want to go, going is action. 
At the same time, what is say? I want. Right? That means you, you, are, you, have, you are focusing on I. Right? I. I. I want to go. That time, the eyes is just nothing to do with the belongings. Simply say, I want to go. The thought which is thinking going, it is the thought, not I. When you say, I'm sick, I'm sick, right? I'm sick, I'm not happy. When you think, I'm sick, actually, your body is sick. Then what do you say? I am sick. That you must differentiate. There's a thought which is thinking, I am going. Also, that time, there's a I. The, the thoughts focus on I. Right? I want to go. I want to go. What do you hear? You hear the sound, the voice. The voice is not I. You just you know, try to recognize based on your ex experience. I, I want to go. That time there's a thought, thought thinking going. Who going? I'm going, going, I want to go, right, I. There's a, this one I, that's me talking about self. Second, what, belonging, right, which belong, which belong to the self. Then second, I want to go. I want to go my house. I want to go where? I want to go my house. Then now you, you must differentiate the first I and second I. Can you differentiate? The first I simply I never, you know, Attached with anything, symbol I want to go, just symbol I. The second is belonging means I want to go my house. The house belongs to whom? I. Right? The, then means one I attached to the house. One I not attached to anyone. Just symbol I want to go. I'm happy. I'm not happy. I want to go. Right? Then my. My house, my hands, my head. You have a, this kind of sense, right? My hands. Then hands look like belongs to whom? I. Right? My hands, my head. That means the, the heads and the head and hands look like look like belongs to I. Then there's two types of I. One, one is just simple I, never you know, attached to the belonging, never attached to the possessor, the position. Second I, attached, linked with the position. For example, my hands, my head, my book. That means there are two types of I, right? That's why it's quite confusion because it's a simple I. Self and which is belong to the self. Actually, when I say my hand, the hand is belong to I. The hand is no I. That's why I feel, you know, is the translation is not that accurate. So here is you know the word is so very little but a lot of confusion, totally extension of conceptions of both. When you achieve nirvana, it going to extension of conceptions, two types of conception. What are they? Conception of steps, conceptions of belong to the step. Then specifically by stopping, stop stopping what all the Whereas internal and external phenomena, right, that means two things, object, the external phenomena, internal phenomena, like your body, your speech, your mind, internal phenomena, right, external, internal phenomena, then 
from appearing is though they were real, reality itself, which they are not along with the latent predisposition of such a small appearance. Now, you don't need to worry the what. Right? When you look at the object, when you look at your hands, you know, your hand, when you look at your hand, they say, my hand. Right? Oh, my hand is very ugly. Oh, my hand is <laughs> so beautiful. My hand. That means these hands look like belongs to I. When the, when the hand appeared to you, appeared, appeared to you as what? Independent phenomena. Exists independently, inherently. So we have a misperception. Right? We have a misperception. How, you know, how all the misperception come for us? How? Yes, when we were a little, you know, when we were very young, of course, we learn everything. We learn, you know, language from our parents. We learn all the, you know, like English or math and science. All the knowledge we have, all the knowledge we have, we learn from our parents, from our teachers, from our friends. There's so many things we never learn anybody. Right? Attachment. Did your parent tell you you must attach to someone? No. Right? There's so many things we have, we never learn from anybody. It's come with us, born with us. Right? Born with us. That means it's a, English, there's a Latin. Right? Put here. Along with the, the Latin predisposition for such a false appearance. That means you have the false appearance. The I, my, they are not exist independently, not exist inherently, but for us appear as an independent phenomena. Why we have all this misperception? Because it's happened through the English word Latin, right? Latin, right? Latin predisposition of such a false appearance. That means in the previous life we have a misperception. Due to the previous life's misperception, they put imprint into our previous mind. Then the previous mind, the continuum, follow us. Right? Follow us. For example, you have a, a you have a guide. The guide have a misunderstanding about the Marina Bay, misunderstanding, misperception. Then he will bring you where? East Coast Park. Right? He doesn't have the right understanding of Marina Bay. He has a misperception. He got misperception because he wrote in you know, a wrong guidebook. Maybe he got the wrong information from someone, right? That's why we have all the false thoughts. Misperception about I, misperception of my. All the misperception we have because we have strong, you know, mental imprint. You know, the Latin in the, from the previous life. So, the Nirvana mean all of the you know misperception, all the sap and as you know uh, two types of sap totally disappear. Then you can achieve nirvana. Then look at the stage by which you enter the reality are as follows: first, having contemplated in the dismay, the faults and the disadvantage of the sex existence, you should develop a wish to be done with it. Then understanding that you will not overcome it unless you overcome its cause. You research its root, considering what may be the root cause of the second existence. You will thereby become certain from the depth of your heart that the, the refining view of the preaching aggregates of ignorance. 
x as the root of the existence, you then you then need to develop the sensor which to el eliminate that. Right? That means first, you know, Lama Tsonga but try to introduce us what does mean nirvana. Nirvana. The nirvana is the, you know, free from the misperception. Misperception of our self and self and the self and which belong to the self. There's me two types of I. There's me symbol is I and me and my. You can say me and my. Me and my. Right? There's a two types of based on the me, there's a misperception about me. Also, there are misperceptions about my. When two perceptions totally dispel within the you know, emptiness of your mind, then you achieve nirvana. This is the nirvana. Then how I can achieve nirvana? Then you need to contemplate between what? You need to develop wish to be done with it. Then understand that you will not overcome it unless. Then you need to contemplate between the nirvana and samsara. Samsara, right? Samsara. Samsara has so many problems, suffering. If I achieve, if I achieve nirvana, it's very peaceful, very blissful. You contemplate two of, between two of them, then automatically you will get a question. Question, right? For example, someone not at all happy, not happy at all in Singapore, or he or she wish to go somewhere. Go somewhere, let's say Europe. So then he or she need keep think need to think need, need to think oh Singapore I'm not happy in Singapore if I go there I will be very happy because you need to think the you know the advantage right of going there and you know problems stay here then you need to think why I'm not happy here I must get out from Singapore how that you need to know you know how to get out get out. That means when you think about the falls of the samsara, then you need to know what the cause of the samsara. Then yes, afflict emotion and karma. Then what are the causes, the condition of the afflictive emotion and karma? Then ignorance, right? That means samsara caused by afflict, afflictive emotion and karmas. The karma and every emotion caused by whom? Ignorance. Ignorance. Then, then at least you will think, you know, if I'm not able to cut the ignorance, then every emotion, negative karma arise continuously. If the karma and negative emotion arise continuously, then I will be continuously in samsara. Do you remember the analogy I told you, you know, you are boiling a milk. Now you know the milk is overflow. If you add water, what? You're going to calm short moment. Again, it's follow up, follow over. This means add water is look like, adding water is look like practicing the non-transcendent serenity and spiritual insight. It reduces for short moment, but it's calm again. Okay, then if you turn off the gas or electric stop, even you turn off, then, then you don't need to worry. It's totally turn off the gas, then no more overflow. That means you need to know how to switch off <laughs> the gas and how to switch off the root of the samsara. There's yes, ignorance. Origin, right, uh, uh, perishing aggregates or ignorance, the root of the existence. You then need to develop the sensor wish to eliminate what? Eliminate the root or origin of samsara, which is ignorance. Right? Next, see that overcoming the refining view of the 
producing aggregates depend upon the developing the wisdom. The knows that the self, as such as concept, does not exist. Concept does not exist. You will then see you have to refute the self. Refute the self. After you know I must eliminate the root, then what you need to overcoming the refining view of what? Pressing aggregates depend upon the developing the wisdom that know the self as the concept does not exist. Here very you know confusion. Look at how we can really you know remove the self. You cannot. That's why at the first day I explain when we think about I, I, even though when you think about, you know, symbolic like cup, when you look at the cup, then you have a true perception. One is the right, one is the wrong perception. Within the cup, when you look at the cup, when you look at any single object, if you just look as a, you know, norm, when you look at the cup with an ordinary mind, then you have a misperception. When you look at the cup, you know, after you analyze for a few seconds, then you look at the cup, then you can have the right view about the cup. Same, when you think about I, when you just look at I with the ordinary minds, then you have a, the misperception about I. When you look at the I, with, with the you know, sudden logic and reasoning, then you have the right perception about I. Right? That means one I is always exists. It's there. We no need to you know, abandon, no need to eliminate the, the I, which is exist. Second, there is a, we have, we perceive another I which is never ever exists, but for us appear every time, which is to remember the I which has a three characteristics. Even though the cup is exists, we cannot deny the cup is not exists, right? The cup is exists. Of course we have to accept the cup is exists. Is the, is the cup exists? It is exist? Yeah, it's existent phenomena. This cup is exist here. Then second question, the permanent cup, does it exist? The permanent cup, does it exist? No. No permanent cup. There's a cup, but not, no permanent cup. Then second question, yes, the cup is exist, not the permanent. Then the singleness cup. The singleness cup does it exist? Singleness means just without depend on any parts. Singleness. No. No, right? Because when you think about the cup, look at the cup, it has many parts. Upper parts, lower parts, handle, side, inside. There are so many different parts come together then became a cup. That means there's not such a singleness cup. There's not such a permanent cup. There's no such a unity cup. That means there's, there's an I, because I come from previous life, it go to, goes to next life. Also, I is the basis of experience, all the truth of suffering. I exist, but the permanent I, no exist. The singleness I no exist. The unity eyes no exist. When we say the asseb is no exist mean the okay the mean the particular eyes I which has a three characteristic. That types of eyes no exist. Okay, that's why it's talking about you know uh, uh, concept but he said what? 
does exist yeah that does does not exist okay so we should have a short break okay so okay so before we move furthermore so make sure you won't have any confusion at the beginning there are two parts the stage of entry into reality the actual determination of reality these are two parts the number one the stage of entry into reality then there is two questions question number one what is the nirvana which is you which is you going to achieve second what is the methods to enter into nirvana right two question then i said nirvana is not n- not really external things you can achieve you have a mind right now the mind has a lot of misperception as well as the mind has a very strong thick you know the uh, the negative imprints the latent disposition uh, this position the right? latent predisposition that means now your mind is totally you know like a oily <laughs> you know oily of the ignorance attachment desire all the you know the the latent predisposition is full of cook so now you need to clean the heart right then you need to use what you need to use very strong you can use simple soap but it cannot clean the oil is so strong next you need to use one of the strongest chemical then you can eliminate the heart then your heart become very pure very clean the strongest you know chemical is the emptiness okay number one you know what nirvana this mean the when you practice impermanence then the misperception about permanent is going to reduce we perceive things you know uh, the condition phenomena we perceive as a permanent it exists as a impermanent the more you meditate on impermanence continuously seriously slowly you can see everything is changing momentarily then you can have a one big benefit which is you don't have a really strong clinging on the you know things because you know it's changing constantly they reminds you you know the separation you and your dear ones you and your belonging once you remember the separation the death then you have a less attachment less anger so and so then same thing then when you practice compassion love tolerance you become more good person pure person but still ignorance is still there it cannot you know change ignorance then finally you know you have to realize emptiness then you need to reflect make a reflection you need to meditate the slowly the ignorant become minimize slowly going to eliminate eliminate where within the empty of the emptiness of the mind for example when you see in right now if you look at the sky is very cloudy right very foggy you def all the foggy all the clouds are look like defilement afflict emotions within our mind after one hour you know do do the wind or do the move moving the cloud then you can see the pure sky right then the foggy sky the killer sky the nature is sem before it just cover you know uh what you call block by uh, the foggy things but the nature is sem then actually the nirvana which is mean the man is totally free from the defilements ignorance as well as the latent predisposition this is the nirvana right then how i can enter into nirvana 
That means first you need to contemplate. You really need to contemplate the faults of the faults of the samsara and disadvantage of the nirvana. When you contemplate seriously, then you can see samsara is very overfull, you know, too much. So nirvana is a very bliss, very peaceful, very good. Then you wish to achieve nirvana. You need to, you know, eliminate, abandon the samsara. How? Then you need to know what are the causes and conditions of samsara. Yes, defilements, afflict emotions, and karma. So what are the cause and root of the karma, afflict emotions? That's ignorance, right? Then you think, if I able to move, you know, able to remove, able to cut, able to root up the ignorance, then samsara, every emotion automatically going to remove. For example, when you cut the root of the tree, you no need to worry the branches, you're going to die, right? So if you just try to cut the root, it takes a long time, even though you cannot cut the you know, cannot eliminate the tree, grow next year again. Then, so then these questions, next look at question here. Next see the overcoming, the refining view of the preaching aggregates de depend upon the developing the wisdom that knows the self. As thus, concept does not exist. You will then see you have to refute that self. Say that self. You never say you have to refute the self. That self. How you can refute? Then here, be certain in the refutation relying upon scriptures, relying on the you know teachings or books or whatever, then lines of the reasoning that contradict its existence and proof is not existent. This means, you know, when you read a sentence, the sentence totally contradict with the self. When you use logic, the logic is contradict with the, the existence of self. Right? Then, that's why you read more texts, you know, teaching about emptiness, for example, form is emptiness. Emptiness of form. When you say form is emptiness, then you think your body, you know, all the aggregates is nature is empty. Then, when, after you read the text verses, then you need most importantly you need to use the logics in order to prove, you know, the the self is not exists. I'm not saying self is not exist, huh? the self is not exist. Self is there. Among the logics, we call, you know, logic of the king. King of the logic. King of the logic. Right? That means there's a lot of logics to prove there's no independent phenomena. Among the logics, one is very important logics, which is you know, king of the logic. Huh? Yeah, dependent arising. King of the logic. King of the logic. Do you remember the logic? Be Tibetan, you know, also at the in India, they use the sprout. The sprout is the basis of, you know, a debate. The sprout is not, ex uh, not exist inherently, not exist inherently. So, we can have a, you know, statement, it's a statement. The sprout is not exist inherently, it's a statement. Why not? Because it is dependent arising. It is dependent arising. So, dependent arising, dependent phenomena, is the reasoning or reasoning. Then you need to think, huh, 
whatever, whichever, whichever being dependent phenomena necessarily not exist inherently. For example, for example, uh, there's a true analogy. One is the magic horse. The magic horse is example. Also, the imaginary in the mirror. Those are the analogy. Okay, once more, the sprout is not exist inherently because it is independent phenomena. It is independent arising phenomena. For example, the magic horse. Like the magic horse. For example, the image, uh, uh, what do you call, no image. M mirror and reflection. You call image or reflection? Reflection in the mirror. Right. So, so before you try to understand, you know, the sprout, the sprout is not exists independently, first you use the analogy. You be so magic horse. So when we go to see magic, so what you sometimes you can see, you know, the magic horse, magic man and woman in the past. When we go there, we really think there's a horse. It's a real horse. There's a real human. There's a real snake, real bird. We think real. We perceive it's a real. How is perceived for us? How? They perceive to, for, to us. How? This means, according to you know, the history, in order to perform at the magic horse, you need a particular substance. Particular substance. Okay? Make sure particular substance. Then mantra. Then uh, the polluted eyesight. Polluted, polluted. So when you, uh, for example, I think some of you went through the simple operation, your eyes, they put some injection, then everything become very blurred. You cannot see. That means, you, you know, mistaking eyes, you can say mistaken eyes. Even though your mind is not really influenced by mantra, mantra, then you cannot see magic horse. Someone very enjoying looking at the magic horse, but you thought, why they are laughing? Huh? Am I crazy? Oh, maybe they are crazy. You thought this way. Because your mind is not influenced, influenced, right, by mantra. That means three things important. The substance, particular substance, the mantra, then the mistaken or the influence uh, is influenced by mantra or substance. Then you can see the major horse, three things. So when we look at the external phenomena or in, internal phenomena, we thought basis bestless. We cannot see anything. There must be some basis there. So when you look at this cup, the cup, the cup it says it looks like you know substance, basis. This is basis. There's a basis. There's a base. Without base, you cannot see anything. There's a base. Then, so second is mantra, mantra. So mantra is the, you know, is the Latin predisposition. So we have a lot of the habit, habituation, right? Habit, habitude in our mind for many lifetimes. So we recite hundreds of minutes of mantra. So truth there. Third, we have a mistake in mind. Because it's the influence mind. That's why you can see the cup is exists inherently independent also permanently, right? So first you think about how the, the magic horse is exists. 
is a real horse or not? Is not. The how is appeared to you through this reason? Then you act. Then slowly you will. You must realize the magic horse is just is there. Is there, but not there from the not exist independently. It depend on substance mantra. My mistake in mind. Right? Then you realize, yeah, the magic horse is not really exist inherently, independently. Then some you know experience you need to apply on the sprout. Then again you look at sprout, yeah. There must be the basis, which is you know, all the things come together. You know, soil, water, seeds, or you know, so many come together. There's something emerge, but we never call sprout. Just something emerge, something there. Then mantra. We give a name of sprout. Not only that, then we have a ignorance, the misperception mind. Then we perceive the sprout as a independent phenomena. Then you use same idea logic, then you can see uh, the sprout is not exist independently because it is dependent phenomena, dependent arising. For example, the magic horse. For example, the reflection in mirror. Right? Then we saw in order to realize the subtle level of impermanence, First, you must realize impermanence, the gross impermanence, then you can enter into subtle impermanence. In order to realize, you know, the subtle, uh, that types of in, in, uh, imper uh, uh, emptiness, first you realize emptiness on the gross phenomena. For example, the magic horse, you know, reflection in the mirror. So this we call king of the logic. He said, look at the sprout is not exist independently. It's a statement. Statement about what? Not exist independently. Which? The sprout. Then you, then you use reasoning and logic. What the reasoning? Dependent phenomena. Arising phenomena. That means you have to think whichever dependent phenomena necessarily not exist independently, we call pervasion. That means, we call why king is a dependent, right? Then dependent arise. The direct translation is the best one. Then dependent, then dependent connection. Dependent arise. You know, there's two words, right? Dependent and arise. S these two words, dependent and arising, there's a two words, has a two meaning. Is the first word, we say dependent, it eliminates one of the extreme, two extreme, right? Two extremes. What are they? Permanence and annihilation. Then, huh? Okay, absolutism and nihilism. So we said dependent. It 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 is is uh, is what we call is a uh, negate. When you say dependent, you know the sprout is. Dependent, it negates what? Negates independent. It stop. It negates, deny, independent, dependent. When you say dependent, mean it exists there, exists dependently. Then deny, refute the dependent. Then when you say arise, is refute what? The nihilism is not 
not not non existent is existent which is arising okay this one, king of the logic mean when you try to understand the meaning of dependent arising is refute two extremes when you able to refute the two extreme that you will able to recognize the the middle way middle way middle way has a three uh, yet yeah, as a two middle way middle way of the basis middle way of the path okay so middle way this we call logic that's what you here look at see here in english mm. be certain in that refutation rely upon the scripture and lies of the reasoning that contradict it existent and prove it non existent that mean when you use the scripture and reasoning the you can approve you can prove the self is not existence da make sure on da this is an indispensable indis- technique for anyone who seek liberation after you have thus arrived at the philosophical view the descent that the self and that wish to belong to the self lack even the share of the intrinsic nature you should custom yourself to the to that that will lead to the attaining attainment of the embodiment of the truth so this part is so important this there's a lot of you know complex word so among the uh, com- uh, complexity self again i re- uh, you know i'm rebuting mental self and simple you can say i i my second mine for example i go i am happy i am not happy that time there's a i that time there's a i as well as there's a thoughts the thoughts thinking what i am i want to go that mean going is action the thought thinking going going home i right there's i second i want to go where my house my house that moment there's a another types of i which is not same as the previous one previous one simply say i go just i second one say i want to go to my house the house is look like possessor to the i there are two types of i right generally there are two types of i within yourself sometimes the i appear sometimes the i with the belonging is appear to you but the both is exist then what both is exist then which one we must refute which one we must deny the i which has which has the i with the three characteristic the i the permanent i then the the singleness i the independent i that i is not exist for us when we think i go for us the i appear as a permanent the i appear as as a singleness as a independent we need to refute the i why so mainly all the misperception all the reflection everything arises based on this misperception misperception about i right then second i want to go my house my hands my leg my head also that time look at this is my head this is my hand this is my belonging that time the eyes look like a king in the country right the kings always think everything my 
my people, my property. Look like the eyes look like king. All the you know, our body, our belongings is belongs to whom? Look like I. That's a the eyes exist, but the eye which has a three characteristic, which look like belonging everything to the eye. This eye no exists, right? So, so you know, if we put together, we have all the misperception, all the defilements because of the misunderstanding about I, misunderstanding, misunderstanding about my. So we need to get up this from this confusion. How you read a proper text about emptiness of I? We use logic, the you know, uh, you call you know the stainless, stainless, stainless logic, and try to realize emptiness. Among the logics, the best is the king of the logic, which is. The sprout is not exist independently because it is independent arise. Independent arise you, you use as a reasoning. Then you try to prove the I, the sprout is not exist independently. Then for example, the magic horse. When you realize the magic horse is not exist independently, the same idea, same experience you must apply on the sprout. Then when you realize emptiness of the sprout, then you must apply same logic reasoning to on I, my. Then you will enter into emptiness of the I and self. Right? Okay. Then next here, mention what? Yes, please. Just, um, just now you said that the, I, I want to go to my house. Mm -hmm. The I appears as two. One as a self and one as a possessor of something. Possess, possesses the house for the I. Uh. So mm. when you say we have to refute that self, is these two selves that we have? One of them. Oh, one, one of them. them. But one of them appear, not appear simultaneously. Sometimes appear that just the eyes not belonging anything. Sometimes the eyes appear which belong something to it. Possessor. Right? Possessor, yeah. Possess something. But this is quite easy, right? Because I go means simply the I not really linked with the anything, just I. But most importantly, now we need to realize, when I say, I want to go, there's a thought, there's a mind. The mind is no, not I, right? no I, not I. Then, yes, the thought which you think I want to go, the thought is not my, not I. Then who is I? Where's I? Right? The thought is definitely no I. The thought, when I want to go, that time there's a thought. The thought focus on where? I. I. Where's I? Where's the I which is focused by the I? Focused by the thoughts. Where's the I? I. Then if you say there's no I, it's not two. There's I. Right? There's I. Then where's the I? Then it's you know another, you know, there's a few uh, things you must know. For example, say my head. My head. When you say my head, that time the me. Me mean you, right? You yourself. When you say my head, the head is possessed to 
the I. Then there's an I which link to the, your head. As some, then it also says, when you say my hand, my hand, and also that term, the hand possessed to whom? Possessed to the I. Then there's an I named based on, based on the hand. Then finally we see now, we say, five aggregates. The five aggregates is the basis. Then I is the characteristic of the five bases, five aggregates. There's a big, you know, difference between two Madhimaga school. For example, if I, you know, point it, what is this? I just pointing this one. What is this? Can you say this is a cup or what? This is cup, right? And this is cup, this is cup, this, everything become cup. Generally, we have a lot of confusion. When I pointing this one, I'm pointing the things, the thing, I'm not saying cup, thing. This is the basis of the cup. Basis, I'm, I'm pointing the basis of the cup. This is the basis. Basis on all these things together, then we name as a cup. That cup. That means the cup merely exists, merely label, merely exists based on the, this thing. That means this is the basis of the cup. The cup usually the merely label based on the this thing. Right? Bit difficult to understand. Of course, that's why I think in the ancient time there were two masters. One master belonged to the the consequence school. You know, within the Madhyamaga there are two subdivision, what are they? Pasangika uh, and? Okay, Savan, Savantika, Savantika. Okay, the Pasangika is the highest, you know, Buddhist philosophical school. That means that one is, belongs to the Savantika, Savantika. Then they have a debate about emptiness. Both of them debating, you know, based on the pillar. Pillar. Then the Pasangika master says, the pillar is not exist, not independently, substantially, substantially. The Pasangika says, this is not exists substantially. Others said it is exists substantially. This means this, this they are debating about the pillar how it exists. One, one say it's not exists substantially, also you know the he hands can pass through the pillar. You know this pillar is just you know pass through the pillar. Also, other masters say, it exists substantially, also he can, he, he can, can pass through the pillar. Can. Both of these can. But... Sorry, can you repeat again? The pillar is substantially because you can pull your hand. No, no, no. There are two masters. One is the Pasangika, one is the Savadantika. Both of them is debating about the, how the pillar is exist substantially or not. The Pasangika master says it's not exist substantially that he, he can go through, go pass through the pillar. Also other says yes, it exists substantially. You can see also his hand also can pass through the pillar. Okay? That means when you really think about how things are exist, exist substantially or not, exist independently or not, you have to be very careful, very careful. If you don't have a good understanding, then you fall into nihilism. For example, look at simple way. 
Everybody agree this is a cup. Then I say, where's the cup, right? I just open the lid, right? Where's the cup? There's a cup still there. If I break the handle, if I break handle, I the DBC complain me. <laughs> if I break the handle, you can say still there's a cup. And then I make a hole. You can say there's a cup. If I dis you know dismantle piece by piece, piece by piece, then you can say, huh, oh, what happened? <laughs> right? Is you know dismantled by practical level. If you dismantle on the mental level, yeah, just imagine a cup. The lid is cup, which is cup, you just go through piece by piece, dismantle piece by piece, piece by piece. Huh? No, there's no cup, right? That means you fall into nihilism. Then you think, huh, no, 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 it's, it's impossible. The cup must be there. <laughs> then again, you think about how the cup exists. Then slowly you fall into absolutism, absolutism. Then you're not able to overcome from the two extreme. You fall into one extreme or another extreme. That's why when you study emptiness, you know, that's why we call, you know, the middle way. You must deny the both extreme, but you should not deny the phenomena, the fact. Okay, so, so we, uh, today we can stop here because uh, it's quite heavy topic. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Prasampika says the pillar is substantial. Prasampika says pillar substantial or not substantial? Not substantial. Not substantial. Yeah. Because, he says not substantial because the head not, the not substantially exist. So he says Prasampika in the debate, the Prasampika says the pillar is not substantially exist. Because I can put my hand across the pillar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other master says it is substantially exist because, because also, okay, he said, also, I, I, my hand can pass through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> okay, it's uh, quite interesting, because do you know, I think, Mirarepa, and his, his disabled Rechumba, Rechung, Milareba and Rechumba. The Rechumba is one of the most important disciples of Lama, uh, Milareba. Then one day he thought, hmm, my practice is equal to Mila. I'm equal to Mila. No need to respect as my teacher because we become equal. <laughs> he thought this kind of ego. Then Milareba, you know, realized he has a Ego. Then Mila, due to his power, Mila Reba, I think, able to bring rings, hailstone. <laughs> then Mila Reba just hide in the small horn. He found in horn, horn, just hide in the horn. Then you know, Richumba really wet, get wet. <laughs> then he bit worry, huh? He's so strong. Where's my teacher? They scream, hello teacher, where are you? Where are you? He was looking around. Then he said, I'm in the horn. If you think I'm, you are equal to me, come in. <laughs> come in. He cannot. But in the reality, the horn never become bigger. Miladeba never become smaller. The size is same, but still go in. You we cannot, as an ordinary being, we cannot imagine. We cannot. It's quite simple. Uh, now we, you know, we have a very advanced technology. We use the microscope. Just, you know, this is a spoon. It looks very hot, solid. You just use the, the micro, microscope, very powerful. First, you can see it's very solid. Zoom and zoom, zoom and zoom, what you can see. 
hundreds of billions of particles just moving, moving. If we have uh, enough at once, you know, uh, kind of uh, tool, something that you can go through. You can, uh, you know, get something from the stone. But we think it's so solid. No, there's no solid. Solid or not solid depend on, you know, it is what you call relativity. For example, this book is solid, we cannot go through. If you put water, after 20 minutes it becomes wet. Water can go through the, this thing. Is solid or not solid is very much, you know, depend on, you know, which perspective we are talking about. Yes, uh, this one pillar looks like very solid. But the reality is nothing solid. There's hundreds of billions of atoms moving. There's a lot of empty or hollow you can pass through. Okay? <laughs> but I cannot. Huh? <laughs> you can. <laughs> oh, any question? Any question? No more? Can we like, overcome the nihilistic thought that the cup does not exist? by saying that the thought that the cup does not exist is itself empty of inherent existence. Can you repeat one more? Can we overcome the nihilism of the thought that the cup does not exist by saying that the thought of the cup does not exist is itself inherently existent? So the thought of nihilism is itself empty of inherent existence? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. I don't think you know you you you're able to overcome from the nihilism just using the uh, the symbol, what you thought. No. Generally, uh, next when we study the Buddhist science and psychology, there's a four. I think logics or four reasoning. Reasoning number one, reasoning of the reality. Or Number two, reasoning of the function. Third is reasoning of the dependent, depending on, dependent, dependent. No, to do giriba. Third is, I think, establish your establish of reasoning. You need to know the four, you know, reasoning. If you know the four reasoning, yes. First, this, therefore, second is possible. First and second, then third is possible. First, second, third, therefore, the fourth is possible. So you study a little bit about the four reasoning or logics. It's very, it's useful how you able to overcome from the nihilism. Then also, in order to overcome, you know, the, uh, what do you call, absolutism, the most important three meaning of dependent arising. Dependent on causes and conditions, dependent on parts, dependent on name and thoughts. You must go through step by step. First, you would have a good understanding of depending on causes and condition. Then, depend, due to the causes and condition, depending parts. Through, due to the two reasons, then you can, yes, dependent on name and thoughts. If you have a, the good understanding of three of them, then for you, quite easy to overcome from the, uh, to, uh, what do you call? Absolutism. Absolutism. Yes. Any question? No more? Okay. okay. <coughs> I realize that all of this talk that we're talking about, uh, emptiness and so on, this is this something that we cannot verify and put in? The thoughts. Now, all of this talk, okay, the discussion, is this something that we cannot verify and put in? No, I'm not rejecting it. I'm just saying that. Correct. We cannot verify and at least now. Uh, actually, you know, 
so we actually we really number one we really don't know what we are seeking that what we really don't know sometimes we attend teaching class or sometimes we attend puja sometimes we do so many things. we actually what we really don't know what we are really really we are what we are seeking if you really finalize able to finalize yes somehow this is my achievement i want to seek this one you need to point it your you know achievement then in order to achieve that point in order to achieve uh, the particular point then you need to apply the perfect application to apply this point you know all the talks we we talking about but is is some you know most of them is not something is useful something not useful something is rely is is a uh, necessary something not necessary for what you want to achieve you want to achieve that's why all the talk i don't think is really you know clarifies all this you know uh, the misperception because we don't have a clear uh, our direction where we want to go second we don't have a clear understanding why i need to apply that's why in all the talk i don't is really clarify all our you know misperception yeah any question then note that we can stop here okay so please uh, dedicate and do the dedication prayers hmm i think it hit very precisely <laughs> <laughs> next i think we go we can go step by step is you know nothing really let me see ah nam ke sin sai pu xia gong ke enter into i think this uh, next this uh, next few batch i think we have to go very slowly until the until the A recognition of something right those sudden wrong oh identifying the object to be negated by reason the page number 126 until page number 126 we have to go very slowly so you can read you know only the three pages read sentence by sentence try to understand if you don't understand at all you know you you try to you ask me a question i i will try to explain if not then what we can do <laughs> <laughs> okay so that's it homework huh thank you remind me the homework